what the creator did. He bent back the upper part of his vagina to rest against the rectum and the saffron coffin and that wrap in an oxygen wrap. The so called release of things. And when you increase the pressures of the abdomen, you are pushing it up. The vagina is never passed that way on the little bit of this. So these are the, the diagrams to, to outline to you. Here is this diagram now. You heard the company. This is the real life situation of the vagina. The first part of the vagina is vertical, and the upper part of the vagina is somewhat horizontal, going backwards. You see that? The rectum is here, and the saffron is there. So when the increasing drop in the pressure, it push the vagina backwards onto the rectum. Be supported by the mid-base plate. Now, we are standing here, and we have a floor which is the support of the building. Eh? Or we can use a similar analogy of the sea. And we have a ship docked out of the sea. The sea is the floor for the boat. So we need to consider the firstly the support of the user and the vagina can be considered as primary supports. And the primary supports are either of the floor or B, the ligament or C, the mechanical axes which the vagina often to you but search with a card to the, the axes of the uterus. You follow me? So the support of the uterus is the primary support. The floor, the ligament, and the vaginal and uterine axis. The secondary support, if there are need support, are the pleuroperitoneal. Did I say pleuroperitoneal? Are the peritoneal folds. And most of us will not considered to be the real support to the uterus and the vagina. So let's consider the primary support of the vagina. The floor first, the floor. The floor of the vagina consists of the pelvic diaphragm. You did that last semester, yes? When you did the rectum etc. No? Okay, this part is like when I stand on the floor. The floor, the pelvic floor, consists primarily of the levator ani muscle. You have seen it from below here. With the vagina and the inner organs. But I think you can appreciate it better when we look at it from above. The levator ani. It's a broad, expansive sheet of muscle which fills the outlet of the pelvis, as it were. And it's described as having three parts. A most anterior part called the tuba coccygeus. This is the tuba coccygeus. It's arising from the back of the you. It's arising from the back of the tuba and the adjacent part of the swipe line. Remember the swipe line? The sending arch or the arch of the sending You know the foramen here, the orifice, that the obturator cannot or obturator foramen. Normally, on the pelvis, you remember, you have the superior pubic grammy and the inferior pubic ground in the middle, and you have that big Foramen, yes. Mm -hmm. Externally, we have the obturator external, but internally, that foramen is more or less closed off by this muscle here, the obturator internal. It's attached to the whole of that margin of the big obturator foramen. 
and in that fact, I'm just leaving this little open at the top through which the obturator vein artery and nerve are proceeding down to reach the thigh. Okay? And the fascia over the obturator internal is simply called the obturator fascia. Yeah? What happens, what happens is when the nibita A gets attachment from the obturator fascia, there's a tremendous thickness in this fascia, the obturator fascia, and now we have the, the white line or the tendon arch, the arch of steadiness. Okay? So let's get back to the first part of the Levita Ina, the pubic oxygen, the setting your way from the way to go. The pubic oxygen is arising from the back of the synthesis pubis, and there is a part of the white line up to about the level of the obturator forming. You see that? That's clear. It swings back. The two of the two pubic oxygen. And as they swing back, some of the fibers insert around the vagina to, to be simply called the pupil vaginalis. So this is one of the things that keeps in the vagina, the pupil vaginalis. Some circle around the urethra and it's called the pupil urethra. But the pupil urethra and the pupil vaginalis are usually considered together and are just simply called the pupil vaginalis. The more lateral parts of the pubic oxygen so will now swing around the rectum. Yes, yeah, it swing around the rectum, and that is called the pubic rectalis muscle. And yes, you can you remember from last semester the significance of the pubic rectalis muscle in maintaining the so-called inner rectal angle. Yes, yeah, at right angle. And that's important for maintenance and for fetal continence. For you to indicate the pubic rectalis has to relax mm -hmm. and that inner rectal angle will move from a right angle to a 180 degree in a straight so that the pieces can get down and out. Okay? Oh. So that's the pubic rectalis. The remainder the more possible. The more lateral aspect of the pupil oxygen, they will go posteriorly and become attached to the lower pocket than the lower piece of the sacrum. In the midline, the two sides posterior to the rectum will form this median wrap, somewhat tendinous intersection to which the fibers are inserted. So that is the first part of the levita the pupil coccyx. And as it swing down from either side of the side wall of the pelvis, they form a somewhat a gutter shape. They have a gutter shape appearance, or like a hummock, and they are supporting these structures. The second part of the levita ini is the iliococcyx muscle, the strand of the sheep here. You know the mammals did say that the iliococcygeus retained their origin from the ilium. And you remember what the slide is called again? As you move from the upper greater pelvis or the pelvis to the true lesser pelvis. That's right, it is an accurate line. So in these animals, the iliococcygeus maintained their origin from the accurate line, which is the ilium in this area. But in us, the of oxygen has migrated downwards to become attached there to the white line. Yeah? So it's brought at base there. And then the path is immediately to be inserted into the complex. Okay? So that's the second part of the Maybe it's an easy, easy to okay. The third part of the maybe it's an easy line. There it is. 
Don't describe as a separate muscle. The constitutes, but some of the books has it still as a part of the Vita Ida, and I prefer that. So some books call it the coccygeous muscle, and some books call it the ischia coccygeous. I prefer this because it's the steady one. Question. Ischia coccygeous again triangular within the opposite direction from the lower coccyx and the lower piece of the sacrum, and then it goes laterally to be inserted into the ischial spine. That's why I prefer the name ischia coccygeous. But in some books, or some instances, we just refer to the coccygeous. Immediately posterior to this ischial coccygeous muscle is the ligament, the sacrospinal ligament. Yeah? We've heard about that, right? Mm -hmm. And the sacrospinal ligament is said to be developmentally the uh, degenerative part of the tendon of the ischial of the ischial coccygeous muscle. So these are the three parts of the levator eni muscle. More posterior, we have the pyriformis muscle. And you are expert at the pyriformis muscle. But it's not really a part of the throat or the diaphragm. It is the levator eni muscle. This is the eni muscle because it's so that important. It gets its stir supply both from its inferior and superior aspect. This is the superior aspect. The inferior aspect is from the pudendal nerve, where we're going through the greater foramen, back down through the left foramen to our top again, and the pudendal nerve. It goes down into the supply of anterior part of the levator eni from its inferior aspect. S2 and 3 predominant. Whereas the remaining part, the Italy and Ischia coccygeous, they are supplied from their superior surface by branches S2, 3, 4, primary, predominant and 3 and 4 from the sacral plexus itself. Remember, the sacral plexus is lying on the hill forms. No? <coughs> so, this there is one of the important pillars there from the support for the instructions. Not only the rectum, remember the rectum is going backwards and the upper part of the vagina is going backwards on the rectum. And they, they call all of this the disease of pain. So that's a, a support of indirect pain. This is just a lateral view. Forum in there. Obturator internus and the fascia, the white line. And this is the aspect of the levator that you form in sling thermos and they always have to answer the base. This is sort of more forward and anteriorly. Okay, this third of the diagram is showing you the, the different parts. I don't need to spend much more time on that. But what I need to spend more time on. Okay, see all of the diagrams, they have the vagina in the book that's being vertical or straight there. Yeah. And we know that that is not so. Yes? Now, 
ran between the rectum and the vagina. Right between the rectum and the vagina there is an important fibromuscular connective tissue mass called perineal body. There is an important fibromuscular connective tissue the rectum and the vagina called the perineal body. The perineal body, some ten muscles are inserted into the perineal body. Mm-hmm. And it's like a spokes on a wheel, a bicycle wheel, the spokes, the sensor, the hub, and you all know things fall apart, the sensor can't hold. And similarly, the sensor falls, things can't hold that. So you need to remember all these ten muscles. Mr. Shadow will tell you that running from the shell superoffices, there are two pairs of muscles. Two superficial and two deep transverse perineal muscles, right? Mm-hmm. So that's four muscles. The divita ani, which are to get some attachment to the divita ani. So that's six muscles. Right? At the front part in your ladies, there's a muscle, the pulvar spondiosis muscle, which gets attachment into the perineal body. So that's eight. And posteriorly, the external inner sphincter is attached to it, that makes nine. And lastly, the contour of the two the muscles of the rectum goes into the, the last door on here where other the previous ones are here. And the inferior fascia is called the perineal membrane. So you can see where the divita any is attachment to the perineal body. Yes? And we know that the second I'm going to tell you that he does hear a man to have to the presence of the earth is yellow and form of the extreme. Yes. Some of our ladies are pretty strong and impatient and they get to live a pain. Some of them are just in some maximum force and push off the baby into the new world, you know? And sometimes when they do that, they tear the attachment of the disease that he mm-hmm. to the perineal body. Yes? And when they do that, especially at home delivery, everybody has a baby falling, grandma, the nurse being the sexual, happy the child is there. But they do not realize that it's done with that stuff for the mother. Mm-hmm. And when this is done, because the perineal body is damaged, destroyed, then the sector cannot hold. And the bad child knows that the prolapse, and these things I just showed you earlier on, will happen. I think. So you understand the significance of the perfect diaphragm, the urogenital diaphragm, and the perineal body. They are all important. When you're doing obstetrics, you will all have to learn how to make a formal incision into the perineal body to the posterior aspect of the vagina called the ball and the autonomy. Especially the first time mothers to make the eggs quite enough for the baby head to come out. But then you will be taught how to carefully repair mm-hmm. these structures that you have made there that the autonomy incision is. So you all understand the flow. Yeah? Let me get rid of the axis of the vagina and the uterus. I showed you where most diagrams in the book have the vagina is being straight, yeah? But in fact, it is not. The lower half of the vagina is somewhat vertical, but then it is uh, mm, about a seven, near, nearly 90, or more, a 70 degree turn over to that direction. And I showed you the consequence of that is that when the intraabdominal pressure increases, pushes the vagina onto the rectum, onto the coccyx, and that wrap oh. the so-called meat of pain. Okay? Rather than straight down. So you will have explained to you about the activities of the uterus, right? Yes? Yeah? Did that excellent? 
the youth trust is somewhat near the right angle in the book to the Vachani. And that is what is called the degree of version. No? So it's a matter of the new world is anti mm-hmm. But sometimes it can be street also. Or rich. And that's because that's the, the more easily the product. Yeah. And some of the girls in fact will have the new girls going back to the direct the first new girls. Yeah? But the new girls on its axis now will then a little bit downward anterior. And that's a big reflection. So all you metropolis are antiverted and anti flexed. You appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Now in the antiverted uterus and anti in the anti flexed uterus, what happens is that the uterus now comes to life on top of the bladder, the superior surface or the dome of the bladder. You remember I mentioned that here? Mm-hmm. And by extension, comes really into the synthesis fluid. Okay? That's understood. So that the axis is of both the uterus and vagina and what the cricket is to a minimized index. To prevent products, it's being as second or support. The area of the uterus and antibiotic is just somewhat unexpected. Then it's written on the superior dome of the bladder and it pushes down when the pressure increases. We push against the bladder and the force is transmitted in the back of the system is fused. They are more prone to prolapse down. Okay. Now this is just a revision for you. Of this left from the uterus. It's of course. They are no more ligaments. They contain vascular, fibrotic, and muscular tissue. These are the real true ligaments of the uterus. And then we have peritoneal fold, secondary fold of the uterus, and probably they do not play the great part in the support of the uterus. You are looking from the uterus from behind at the cervix there. We have the uterus after the comments from the cervical region going back, curling around the rectum, which is there. To go to the sacrum, the uterus sacral ligament. Yeah? And the natural pull of the uterus sacral ligament is to draw the cervix posterior, yeah? Okay? It's to draw the uterus the cervix posterior. That's the natural pull of the uterus sacral ligament. You can see at this level. Neurated, being put in here. And the bridge over the top of the waters, you turn half across in there. So when the gynecologist is dividing these, you just have to the ligaments and the transverse cardinal ligament, which is what is the name given to that fibromuscular tissue through which the uh, uterine artery is run, right? Transverse ligament is called of McEnroe, mm-hmm. the cardinal ligament, yeah, as well. The lateral ligament is called as well. And it's also called the retinacular susceptible to uterine mm-hmm. of body. <laughs> <laughs> so all these things are applied to this one lateral transverse cardinal ligament. Okay? Those will tend to pull the cervix laterally and their pulls will tend to neutralize each other and by that we keep the cervix in the midline. Mm-hmm. These ligaments also, lateral ligaments I'm dealing with, also tend to be somewhat of a form of shape and from the lateral aspect and they keep the cervix in its position acting as a form of image yeah, for the other. Just going up, this is what the ligament of the ovary has no place in the support of the uterus. And mm-hmm. attached similarly, but anteriorly should be the mm-hmm. 
Oh, wrong. Wrong ligament. The wrong ligament. It's really it's, it's the ligament of the over. Mm -hmm. They are attached to the lateral. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm coming from above. I showed it last time. The other pole, Going towards the ovary. We have the okay. ovarian vessels and nerves and the fat. But primarily the ovarian vessels coming down. Mm -hmm. And the pole of peritoneum is called the suspensor ligament of the ovary. Or the more clinical name that was the infundibular pelvic ligament. So when the gynecologist is doing a total hysterectomy, there was the lightest ligament here. Yeah? And I'm telling you, I told you last week that this is one of the levels in which the urethra can be damaged and crosses over the application of the common allic artery. Yeah? But if you consider that as a ligament, you can say, hey, active through the wrong ligament, active through the ovary, that the suspensor ligament will act as a suspect, as a secondary support to the uterus. Okay, thank you for what you Probably not such a good support. So. <laughs> Look, you know what is the, the uterus now? The of the uterus? They have the ovary ligament, fellow in tube there. And there we have the wrong oh, way to in the uterus. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Running laterally across the over everything. And when it reaches the anterior lateral, it passes through this hole here. Deep in the middle ring. Mm -hmm. And you can see the lateral to the special. The interior and the other chakra. Remember that tomorrow I'll talk again about that. So go with the wrong ligament. And the suspects are the And the ligament of the over are attached to the lateral cord. And it is said by Swish and others, in truth, that the, the wrong ligament will tend to pull the, the fundus of the uterus forward and, and in that way, maintain the, the angle of version and infection. Yes? And in some ladies, when the uterus are either straight up or the other way inverted. They can't get pregnant some more or the other. One of the things, after getting anything, of course, one of the things the gynecologist did do is to identify the wrong ligament in the uterus canal and then he can put it forward so that the uterus now is like an inverted. Okay? They make up some money in each case. So that is one of the, the um, procedures that I have done.